This here is a Casio PV1000 video game console. This is a Japan exclusive and was released in the early 80s. According to Wikipedia, this was released in 1983, in October, although I do have a video game cartridge which has a date on it saying 1982, so I'm not too sure if Wikipedia is uh, wrong on that one. So the system itself is powered by a Z80 processor, and I'd say in terms of graphics and gameplay, to me it's kind of similar to an Atari 2600, but a little bit better. That's probably the best comparison I can make. And around that time, if this system did come out in 1983, then it would have had this to compete with, which is the Nintendo Famicom, which was extremely popular in Japan, and is probably the reason why this system did so bad. It, this was not up for sale for particularly long before it was pulled from shelves, which makes them... I'd say it does make them rare, but if you are looking for a system, you, you can find them. They're not... I think there's a bit of a stigma or um, a myth that these systems are quite hard to find and if you look for them you will find them and you can get them reasonably priced but you know if you're going on eBay you're going to see them up for silly money. But back, yeah, back to the system, so it's finished in a very nice deep blue and I think for the time it's, I think it looks nicer than the Famicom does. Um, it just it looks like a very nice bit of kit. Same for the controller. Everything for this system, including the video game cartridges, which I've got one of here, it's all sort of finished in a very nice deep blue plastic. It's kind of hard to see there. But everything matches. Yeah, I, th I think it actually looks great. Now, the name PV, Casio does have a range of systems with the PV logo or name one of them here is a PV7, this is a MSX computer that Casio make and they have a lot of systems using the PV name so I'm not too sure what links the family together but they do have a, a lot of PV MSX systems there is a PV2000 which I believe is similar to an MSX system if it isn't an MSX system altogether now the controller here we've got two main buttons for fire. These I believe do the same thing. You have a start and select button and eight directions on the stick. The controller itself it, it feels okay. I wouldn't say it's the best controller I've ever used. It probably feels a little nicer than an Atari 2600 controller but I wouldn't go much further than that with it. You get a little toggle switch on the front for main or attack. I don't know if that would be a turbo mode or an auto fire mode or something like that. So, but you know, nice looking controller. And um, I think they do similar controllers for these for the MSX. In fact, it wouldn't fit in an MSX, but um, I've seen other Casio controllers in this style. So, this must just be the PB1000 specific one. The reason I say that. It's, <clears throat> it has its own sort of mini DIN connector which goes into the front there. Now on the system itself you get an RF out port and a standard barrel connector port. <clears throat> the system runs on a 15 volt negative polarity power brick like this here. Now 15 volts is a little large for a system like this, I'm just going to assume you could probably run this on a original Famicom adapter if you wanted to, or anything which is sort of around the 9-10 volt negative polarity. I'm not too sure what this is like internally, um, but 15 volts to me just seems quite high for, for something like this. Now going back to the game, so this is one of the games and this is the box. <coughs> Now there's only about I think 10 to 13 games released for this system. It's not it's not a very big library. You could probably get them all relatively easily. And this is actually a game made by Konami. If I can get the logo up. This is Konami 1982. Now I'm not too sure if that's just Konami from 1982 or that is implying that this system 
um, you know, the game itself was made in 1982. And if you look at the label here, it does make mention of the PV2000. So I'm not too sure if the PV2000 was an MSX style system, which was compatible with PV1000 cartridges. Um, I just don't know enough about the 2000. But anyway, uh, let's fire it up and see what the game looks like. So I've got the system set up. Now, just out of curiosity, I decided to measure the power coming out of the power brick. And yeah, forget anything I said about using a Famicom or a 9 volt, 10 volt negative power supply. Because this thing was outputting 24, sometimes 25 volts. Um, so whatever is inside this system, I'm assuming there's a regulator in here which probably wouldn't work with what I was thinking. And I also noticed it did have a slightly different type of barrel connector, a slimmer one than what other systems use anyway. So yeah, if you want to power this system up, you need the correct barrel and a 24-25 volt power supply. Obviously when the system you know, is under load it will probably drop to more around what the, the brick says, but anyway, let's get to the system. So when we turn it on, there's just a power switch on the side. Light comes on, and then we have the screen. Now, this is just the basic menu for Amadar, but to get this working, you need NTSC mode and that's what you want for the sound carrier. Now obviously PAL will be black and white. If you use NTSC 4.43 that will be black and white. You need I think it's 3.53 and anyway let's get into the game. Now I am going to play one-handed so it won't be particularly good and to play we press start. Now this is just a Pac-Man sort of game really, there's nothing too exciting about it. Anyway, yeah, you can sort of see the comparison between old or early Atari, ah there we go, but you can see the comparison between old sort of Atari type games, it just seems slightly more advanced maybe, not by a great deal, let's just lower the brightness and actually, now the, obviously the video quality isn't going to be great, we're using RF here so yeah we can't expect anything, can't expect anything amazing, but that's a little look at what one of the games for this system actually looks like. Try again. And AI is pretty vicious actually. You can actually see um, the enemies sort of have a black square around them. So I'm not too sure how the actual sprites or the, the characters here are actually drawn so Tell you what though, they've actually got some pretty good chasing AI. Either that or I'm just getting bad luck or I'm crap at the game. There we go, we actually managed to get a square. And that's probably all I'll manage to do on this, because it's kind of hard to play it just with one hand. But anyway, yeah, that's a little look at what this system is like to play. Unfortunately, I don't have any other games. Actually, one quick thing, we can see this game was 1982. Um, like I said, I don't know if that means this cartridge was produced in 1982, um, which might mean the system is from 1982, or if the game was just made in 1982 and it's been ported to a PV1000 cartridge later on. But anyway, yeah, there you go. That's a look at the system. A little bit of information about it and what it actually looks like playing it on a proper CRT. I have seen a few videos of this system, but it's 
sort of been through emulation and things like that and this is how you would have played it back in the day through the original RF tuning it in so yeah and that's that